A chap called Ruben sent me an email and he'd been watching a video by Thomas Nagy. Now, Thomas Nagy is an electrician who works in London. He's a self-employed electrician and he records just about everything he does. It's quite an interesting channel. It gives you a really good insight into domestic electrical work. And uh, one of the things uh, that he was doing in a particular video was he was looking at these British general sockets. Now, I'm not. this is uh, one I've had sitting here for possibly a year or two. I'm not sure if it's uh, the same type as he had. But... In the instructions he was saying, it's quite nice you can test it in circuit because the USB circuits in this socket are designed to withstand insulation resistance tests at 500 volts. A reading of 10 mega minimum is typically caused by the USB sockets. And that's kind of interesting. I've never really considered that because I try and avoid getting involved in domestic work as much as possible. But if you consider... The circuitry of the USB socket, and we'll test this socket later. I've got my 500 volt tester here. I've got the 1000 volt tester, but I'm not going to blow this up because, uh, yeah, I, I got this out. I got this to take to bits, actually. Maybe I'll just take it to bits later as well. But the AC supply comes in. It's typically about, it's supposed to be 230, but 240 volts here. And it comes in through a bridge rectifier. There will be probably a fusible resistor uh, there just to act as a set of local fuse and then it's got the output has been rectified goes to a smoothing capacitor which is normally rated 400 volts now then it goes on to the circuitry uh, I, I wonder if this, the capacitor in here is 400 volts there's only one way to find out a 400 volt capacitor should withstand a higher voltage than that for a brief test typically speaking on our UK supply do I have my calculator here yes I do is it covered in dust? Yes, it is. In the UK, our, on our 240 volt supply, 240 volts, the peak voltage that that capacitor will charge up to is times 1.41, and it charges up to th about 340 volts. So they rate the capacitor generally about 400 volts to allow for that sort of allow a margin above that. So when you actually run an insulation test on it, the voltage in that capacitor is going up to the test voltage, which in this is a DC output, which will get rectified. Whichever way it's applied, it will charge that capacitor up to 500 volts. And at that point, the circuitry will be running. As long as there's no load connected, if there's a load connected, it would actually show uh, a much lower reading. But if there's the output's floating, the circuitry will... I'm not going to draw the circuitry. The circuitry will be run that little transformer and the output from that will be going through a diode and charging a capacitor up. And there may be a very slight load across that. But once that circuitry is run, charge capacitor up and it's stable, it will draw a very low current because the circuitry has a very low standby current. And that is what the meter will actually read and it will interpret it as a resistance. But it's not actually resistance. It's, it's just measuring a current that, you know, just happens to show a resistance for that particular level. The other aspect in here is there will be a Class Y capacitor. This is a good good brand, British General. It's a generic brand in the UK. It's what you might call a bread and butter brand. Um, that, you know, it's not like the posh MK ones. It's down-to-earth, cost-effective brand, and the stuff's fine. But uh, there's usually, say, one nanofarad, but 1,000 volt capacitor between that and Earth. So even testing between any of these and Earth... Uh, it should actually be absolutely fine because it's not going to exceed the rating of that capacitor, the, the, the 1,000 volt rating. So let's test this socket for a start. Let's plug it in. I have hooked some cables onto the back, um, and I'm just going to plug it in. And we'll test the output, making sure there's nothing exposed in the back that I can poke my fingers on. That's quite nice. Everything's well recessed down in here. That's quite nice. So let's plug in the USB tester, and it's showing 4.88 volts. Let's uh, zoom down in this. So it's showing 4.88 volts. It's supposedly rated for 2.1 amps. Let's plug this in, this load. So I'll tilt this so you can see it. 4.87, let's start loading it down and see if it goes lower. The voltage is rising. Now, some of these power supplies do that. They raise the voltage slightly as the load goes up to compensate for cable resistance. So now it's hitting 5 at 1.4 amps. 
1.5, 1.6. This is when I wish the meter updated a wee bit faster. 1.8 amps, 1.9, 2. 2. 2.1, it's scoring 5 volts at 2.1 amps. So that's absolutely fine. Let's see what happens when I nudge it up. Dropping down a bit now. Oh no, it's bounced back up. 2.4, 2.5 amps. Holding 5 volts at about 2.5 amps. Let's just keep nudging it. No, it just dropped off about 2.6 amps. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. This is one of these situations, although it says it's a 2.1 amp uh, uh, charger, it's not going to give you 2.1 amps on both these independently. Uh, it's going to give 2.1 amps total. So if you plug a load into one that's drawing, say, 1 amp, then you can also draw 1 amp out the other. But if one's uh, something's drawing 2.1 amps, it's going to potentially trip it if you try plugging something else in and it tries to draw a high load too. Uh, just out of interest, where's one of these little uh, lights here? Would that make a nice little night light? Yeah, it would make a nice little night light. So many things you could plug into them. I don't 100% approve of electronics that are built in permanently into a, into home wiring. Uh, I've always thought, you know, if something goes wrong, you can't do anything about it. it. It does involve, instead of just unplugging a charger, you have to physically change the whole socket. And if you don't do that, then if it's faulty, you've got faulty electronics just sitting in the wall active all the time. I've never really been too keen on that, but uh, every cafe you go into has these now. So we've tested this. Uh, it's passed its test. Let's do the insulation test. So I've just unplugged the lead here. Let's bring the horribly named socket and seed tester. Uh, let's untangle the leads, which I've just completely tangled up. I've watched a few of Thomas Nagy's videos. Uh, I quite like them. They're very ambient. He's got a good voice, very clear voice. And uh, he just, he absolutely records everything. It's a very good channel. I shall provide a link to it. So let's turn this on. Uh, it's an insulation test mode, 500 volts. Let's uh, go between live and neutral. See if I can get a connection in here and do the test. It says it's 0.29 mega ohm. Okay. That's not great. Okay, let's go uh, live to earth. Uh, let's do it uh, fast reading. It's greater than 2 mega ohms. To neutral. It's doing the test fast now because I've removed it from the, put it onto instant test mode. If you ha do a certification test, it has to hold that test for quite a length of time. Uh, but that's not uh, what they're saying. They're saying it should be about 10 mega ohms at 500 volts. It's less than 1.99, so uh, that ha means I have to go back to this test and do it. Doing its test, it says, yeah, about 300 kilo ohms. Hmm. It may vary between meters, but it's not really meeting what they said, is it? They said it would be a reading of 10 mega ohm. Okay, that's odd. But anyway, now I've done that test. Disappointing result. Uh, let's actually open the socket. So that this is going to involve drilling this off. And we'll take a look inside. So one moment, please. The rivets have been drilled out. Let's uh, unscrew the cover and get it off completely and take a look inside and see what sort of quality the circuitry is. So that's a, that reading suggests, I don't think the insulation of the capacitor as such was breaking down. I think it's just the fact it had a fairly modest quiescent load that was just uh, duping the meter into thinking it was a, uh, oh, that's a nice circuit board. Oh, that's not what I was expecting. That actually looks quite nice. I'm easily distracted, am not I? Right, let's get this out. Oh, it comes out with a wee module as well with the bus bars going under it. 
I like it. Right, okay, uh, where's my snips? Can you tell I like it? Yes, you can. So uh, that's uh, one more, that's one more, right, okay. Right. Ooh. So here's the, so let's uh, zoom down this. Let's uh, try and brighten this up. This is where it goes horribly wrong. Oh, that's not too bad. Um, so there's the 400 volt 10 megafarad capacitor. So they have this 400 volt capacitor was charged up to the 500 volts. Uh, so is this one because they've got filtering. Look at that. So they've got a capacitor across the input. What is that in the back? Oh, it's a little tiny bridge rectifier. I've never seen one like that style before. How odd. Um, we've got the supply come in. It's going through a real fuse. Uh, it's got the suppression capacitor. It's got the rectifier on the back here. Then it's got the smoothing. Then it's got the inductor and more smoothing. There's the class Y proper big spaced class Y capacitor. Proper separation between the two sides. There's not a slot cut out, but that's okay. And look, they've got the... Uh, triple insulated wiring here and to allow for it to be wound easily it's two cores they've got wound together and the output they've got the diode here and then the capacitors are the capacitors just in parallel i think they are yes they are uh, smoothing for the output one of the outputs here has a little chip which might be a sort of smart uh, output type chip for duping the whatever you plug into it, into detecting it as being a particular type of socket. That's worth mentioning because it's not marked in the front. And if that's... I don't know if it's connecting to both. It might be connecting to both, but if it's not, then that may actually be uh, telling this socket here, which one is it? It's the one on the, the left, that it... It might uh, fool stuff into thinking it's plugged into... Well, it, it'll indicate. It'll do things that if you plugged an Apple phone into it, it might actually charge at the full current instead of being all snotty like Apple phones are. Ooh, got a little snipe at Apple in there. Uh, the circuitry in the back, there's a little switch mode type chip down there. I'm guessing that's switch mode. Yeah, with a transistor here. And then the transformer, which is, you know, this actually looks like... The transformer is mounted just at one end. It doesn't have the pins going into the board. The, to get good clearance, they've got the secondary coming straight off and going straight onto the resistor, the diode, should I say, and then the uh, the capacitor. It's very good. It's very smart. Uh, now, I want to do an insulation test on it again. One moment, please. So I've just rigged up a quick test. I've put my meter in series, and uh, I'm doing a current test, and the standby current is only 0.3 of a milliamp. Uh, having said that, 0.3 of a milliamp is actually significant because the electrical test is done round about 1 milliamp, I think, at 500 volts. So this is actually quite a significant uh, current flow. It's not. It's tiny current flow, really, for standby current. But uh, it's going to skew the, the readings. Let's uh, get the meter back up and test this again. Let's change my probes back to the normal setting. These are the wrong type of thing. I've got crocodile clips on it there, or alligator clips. Uh, right, so what was I doing? What was I doing? Let's get the insulation tester up again and just give it another quick zap. This is where I wish I'd used it. I should have actually stuck crocodile clips in this. That would have been so much more convenient. I shall try uh, not to give myself a zap while I'm doing an insulation resistance test on this. Uh, right, this is going to be one of those things. Is that going to be clear? Let's put that to there, that to there. And I'm just going to have to put my finger at the other side and try not to get a zap. Test. Oh. Test again. Yeah, it's getting the same reading. It must just be detecting that as a sort of standby current. I'm just going to do one other little thing now. 
Okay, just to make sure everything's above board here, I've put a 1 mega ohm resistor across here with 10% tolerance. Let's do a test on it. 0.99 mega ohm. Absolutely fine. Um, so, yeah, uh, I guess, you know, because it's not actually a resistance it's measuring, because it's detecting that sort of low current, uh, quiescent current there, the reading you're going to get from meter to meter is going to vary. I wonder what meter they use to actually test that to get their, their estimated 10 mega ohm. Uh, odd. Uh, having said that, one good thing has come out of this. I like this circuit board. It's actually, it's a, you know, it's made to British standards. It is quite a nice thing. I'd almost be confident, particularly given it's got a proper little fuse here, I'd almost be confident to install one of these in my house. Not that I'm actually going to, but, you know, I'd almost be confident enough. Uh, while I've got this open, let's take a look at the typical construction of a British socket. The first thing to note is the safety shutter here. This is the bit that... Uh, uh, this is swamping out because it is super white. If I plug in this completely shady uh, adapter, when you push this in, it pushes... The earth pin goes in first and it pushes a little ramp here this little ramp here, and it pushes the shutters down and exposes the bottom connections here, the, the live and neutral. So uh, that uh, is the safety feature for basically stopping kids poking things into the connections. Not that that's necessarily a bad thing because they generally learn all about electricity when they do. And uh, yeah, it's making good. Uh, now I've just uh, pushed that in so it bottoms out. It's Obviously, it's missing the thickness of the plate here. But it has. Uh, it's made good connection to the, the metal here. The other reason, let's say uh, I push the earth connection out the back. The thing, the reason about uh, some of the crappy uh, things from the Chinese eBay sellers where the, just nothing meets standards, they sometimes sleeve the earth pin as well. The reason you can't do that is because if this was fully bottomed out, that connection point at the sides there would potentially be on the plastic insulation and you'd be relying maybe on the end actually just touching if it does actually touch when it's fully inserted. So that's where why you can't have the sleeved earth pin. It would make connection initially, but as you pushed it into the point the other ones made the connection, then it would defeat the actual earth connection. But that's down to the crappy Chinese stuff that just, they, I don't know why they do that. Uh, this is the switching mechanism. The switching mechanism involves a little rocker plate uh, that sits down on the connections at the bottom and then when... Uh, can I do this? Can I do this? When you use the rocker here, which has got the injection moulding or an insert actually maybe, uh, to show when it's in the on position because it shows red when it's out. When that comes in and out, I'm not sure you're going to see this. Let's uh, zoom up. Let's uh, ping screws everywhere. Let's zoom up on this. I'm not sure if you're going to see that, but as that switch goes backwards and forwards, yeah, it's all falling to bits. That clicks suddenly up and makes a good solid connection. And the reason it clicks suddenly is because uh, the plunger here is spring-loaded. So that as soon as it goes past the sort of rocking point, it suddenly snaps that connection up. It seems pretty well made inside. It looks fine. Absolutely fine for a, a typical British socket. And again, I'm going to say I'm surprised at the quality in here. I wasn't expecting that. That's quite nice. That the uh, circuit board is... They've not skimped, they've not jammed in a wee tiny module with uh, loss of isolation. They've actually designed the socket around the USB module and left that big space with the plastic shielding inside for that to go in. It's very nice. So yes, uh, that's the test done. It failed that test. Uh, actually, have I been off screen for that? I probably have. Oh, well, uh, I'll, I'm going to review the footage. If it's if it's really bad, I'll re-record it. But uh, yes, in short, uh, quite a nice module in that socket.